This project I've been working on for the past few days is about hump molds. Now, hump dish platters have been made for centuries and they're some of my favorite pots. I do my version of them as you can too. And it, it's a simple process to get to the hump mold stage. These are some from our studio. And it starts with finding forms that you're going to transpose into clay. Now, I make my molds out of clay. I bisfire them at cone 08, so they're pretty porous and soft. Or not soft, they're absorbent. So, once I put a slab over a bisque fired mold, it comes off very quickly within 30 minutes. So I hit a box store. I'll, I'll hit flea markets and I'll hit up um, antique shops, junk shops, box stores, anywhere I think I can find a form that's different than a round throne form. I found these plastic bowls which I kind of like. Um, I like the corners on them and I further uh, accent those corners when I get the clay mold over the top of it. I found these, a whole bunch of these um, very inexpensive wooden bowls. I think they're from India or Africa, I'm not really sure, but they're pretty rough and ready. But again, I looked at it and I thought, this could make an interesting form for uh, slab work. Now, the largest of those forms was pretty bad shape. And uh, I'm not concerned about the inside. I'm not slumping clay inside a form. I'm using the outside and only as a starting point. As you can see, this has some cracks in it and I filled one or two in with um, epoxy to smooth it out. And then I sanded it just to get the form cleaned up. And uh, this is one I'm gonna work on this afternoon, trying to get a couple of molds made from this one. Now it's very typical that you can find wooden bowls and you can find forms that are plastic, glass, metal, wood, anything you think would transpose into a, a nice form for you to use for slabware. A simple bowl like this doesn't need any cleaning up. These I found, and they're quite nice wooden bowls. I have no idea where they were made or who made them, but again, I looked at them and said, I could probably use this as a slab mold as a master form. So, one of the first things I do is I get these forms elevated and I often use a piece of 4x4. Um, four four. I'll use a coffee can sometimes. Here's a piece of 4x4 four four. and I get them glued into the bottom of the mold that comes off the found form. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Now sometimes I'll throw a pedestal. These are wooden forms. I think they're made in Japan. And um, what I will do is attach it this way and it becomes a mold to press clay over. So let me see if I can clarify things a little bit more and show you the or describe the steps that are used to get to a master mold. First thing you're going to do is find a form that you like and can translate into your work. A couple things I've discovered about looking for forms. One is the angle of the form, the downward slope or the upward slope. One doesn't want it to be less than 45 degrees. If it's steeper than this 45 degrees, what's going to happen is when you put the clay over it, clay is going to shrink and slide up the mold and it usually takes 24 hours for that to happen and it will literally pinch the mold and you'll develop some cracks in it. So I look for forms that have a nice uh, at least 45 degree slope or more. The other thing that I've noticed is if I find a general form I like and in this case this plastic bowl, it's got some divots from the molding of the bowl itself, the plastic. I don't care about that because I'm not going to use 
any part of this as a finished mold. I'm going to put clay over it and work the outside surface of that clay to be my master mold. Okay, so we have our, our found form stuck to our pedestal. I'm going to next put a slab of clay over it and press it tightly to the form. Wait 24 hours until it shrinks away. Release the form, which leaves me with this. I bisque fire it, attach a stand, and that becomes a master mold. Now, off of this master mold, I can make more molds, or I can start making plates one at a time. For me, in a production mode, I want to make six or eight of these at a time. And so I'm going to create, over these next few days, about half a dozen of these molds. And this is a painter's guide. I think wallpaper people use them also. But it's a really good smooth tool to take texture off these slabs. Now it's sharp on each end, so as I'm doing this, I'm slightly bending it up at the ends, just a fraction, so I don't dig the ends into my slab. Okay, now I don't want to use my fingertips much at all. So I'm using the palm of my hand and trying to just lightly press this clay close to the shape as best I can at this stage. Now I, I'm touching the clay but at the outer edge. Now something that helps a whole lot is do this with this banding wheel. This takes a little bit of time and I don't rush the process. As soon as I can, using a thick wire knife, I'm going to cut away some of this because I'm starting to see where the edge of the mold is. The less clay you're dealing with here, the better. And again, let's take a little bit more Better to do this trimming in small increments than try and take it all off at once. Okay, I'm pretty much pressed up against the, uh, the mold here at the edge. So one more quick trim. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to work on this a little later. Now, there's going to be a line here and here. I want this defined and these two lines defined. And to do that, I'm going to use this rubber pony roller. They make them in wood also. Um, I just don't use it a lot because it will make a facet across the soft clay. Just 
So I'm kind of working at it slowly. Now I might spend 10 or 15 minutes getting this as perfectly faceted at the corners as I can. And when it dries, it's going to shrink up this mold and release itself. And that usually takes 24 hours. Okay. I set this up a little bit so we could do this video, but this is what happens 24 hours later. You can see the shrinkage is taking place. This thing is really stiff now and comes off easily. Next step is to get the rim finished and sitting flat. So once we bisque fire it, put it on a pedestal, I'll have a nice flat rim to trim up against. Whenever I work the rim of the mold itself, it's, it's pretty stiff and pretty heavy. It's quite a thick piece. I tend to work it on a piece of foam rubber. Now, see the inside? Not so nice, but I'm not going to use the inside. Eventually, I'm going to put my pedestal here. On a banding wheel, I use a sure form blade or rasp tool, I think they're called. That looks pretty good. So the next step here is to get this dry. I might take a piece of green scrubby like this when it's bone dry and just smooth these edges over. I don't want to round them too much. But this happens much quicker when it's bone dry. You want to wear a mask also. Okay, let's get this dried. And there's a real quick tip about that. How to keep these from warping. Okay, a little recap here. This is my master mold. This is my master form. This is the found object. I put a one half inch slab, thick slab over this, and I got these. Bisque fired with a pedestal or a stand glued in the center. Now, I could continue to make master molds off this one. I'd use thicker clay. But right now, let's make a plate or a bowl off this mold. So I've rolled out a slab, which is um, a little bit below half an inch thick, about three eighths of an inch actually. These are, end up being big serving bowls and I don't want them to be too heavy, um, but they need to be sturdy also. So I used this and I squeegeed, smoothed out both sides, taking the canvas texture away. And now I'm going to put my texture on it. And I'm going to use a large rope roller and then a small rope roller, flipping them back and forth. You'll see what I mean. This gives a very subtle texture. I don't need anything um, terribly deep, just something to interest the glazes.
Now this clay is about throwing consistency. So it's not too stiff, but it's not real sloppy soft either. Now I could decorate both sides, but I'm just going to do the one side of this dish. Okay, there's a the texture. Realizing I'm going to lose some of this texture when I flip it over and press it tightly onto the mold, but that's okay. I'm going to cut away, now I'm not touching the slab yet, I'm going to cut away a bit of this. But at one end, I'm going to leave it a little longer because I'm going to pick it up rather than flip it onto the mold. I'm going to pick it up and drape it. These are sometimes called drape molds too. Okay, there's our mold. Let's pick this up. Center it as best we can and lay it down. Now, I'm trying not to touch my fingertips anywhere on the form itself, just at the edge. Again, I put it up on a banding wheel, and you see the advantage of having it on a stand. Center it up to find the foot area first, the base. Now press the clay down to the mold. You know, this, this mold made out of clay and bisque fired works much quicker than plaster or wood or anything else. Within 30 to 40 minutes, I'll be able to take this plate off this mold and we'll have a look at it. I'm going to trim away this excess clay, but not all the way up to the edge yet. I just want to get the bulk of the weight off the mold. Now we're going to make a final trim, again using a thick wire knife. keeping it rather flat, parallel to the table, rather than tightly angled. And again, work it on tightly until the edge of the slab is mimicking the edge of the mold. Okay, now I've let this clay, about three-eighths of an inch thick, dry over my hump bisque mold. And you can see there's a little bit of a shadow or a little bit of a line of the bisque square showing, which tells me that this thing has started to shrink already and come upward on the mold. That also tells me the inside skin of this plate is really stiff. The outside's still soft, but the inside's stiff and so it's ready to come off. So I'm going to put a board here, flip it over, take the mold out, hmm, pattern's not bad, it's kind of subtle which is okay. My next step is to clean this rim. I don't want this rim to be razor sharp and right now it would be if I glazed it and fired it. So I use a, a couple different tools. One is a piece of um, uh, rasp tool or sureform and I can use this one also. And here's a little tool I use a lot. It's an old potato peeler and what it does with leather hard clay it just 
peels away just like a potato skin. So I'm going to take off this sharp edge first. Now I use the roller I use the roller and I soften this outside edge so there's not much sharpness left. Very light touch. All right. I don't know that I really even need to use the sure form but I'm looking for a slightly rounded rim, not not square and not flat. Something kind of uniform, so it's a very light touch at this point. All right, I still have a sharp edge here, so I'm going to take some water. Oh, that water's cold. I'm just going to fold the sponge over the rim and soften it just a little bit. Push my thumb onto that sharp edge through the sponge. You don't want to do a whole lot of manipulating at this point because it takes the form out of flat, out of evenness across the top. All right. Something I often do is I put a finishing line just inside the rim. It's something for me that holds the decoration or whatever's going on inside the, the pot. Um, it holds visually, holds it inside. So what I do is, and this is a, a Chinese chopstick, I'm using the pointy end of it. I'm putting my fingertip against the rim, putting the chopstick against my finger, and putting the tip just inside, and then pressing and turning it. Whoop. Now, I slipped out of it here, so I can repair that quite easily and start again. Back up a little bit. And then a real quick soft sponge just to sh sh soften that line and we're done next step is to dry this thing and I want to dry it with a very level flat top to it so what I do is I take a board nice flat board put a piece of newspaper on it so the newspaper is going to connect with the rim when this pot is upside down and shrink with the pot. So what I'm going to do is this. Pick up my bottom board down here and flip the whole thing over. So the whole rim is contained on a piece of newspaper. A couple of days, I can flip this back upright, get it through the bisque kiln, and then get it glazed.